happen on that side of the stage. Although over on this side, nothing but smiles. Me and Gibbler are still very much in that predictions tournament. We got another good match coming up for you guys. We got Lead Paint versus APX Void. Uh, Lead Paint um, hailing from Grand National Champions. APX Void making his comeback into Hearthstone. He took some time off to do some of his own personal stuff and then he came back into Hearthstone to prepare for this preliminary. Yeah, we saw him, I believe, uh, lose in just the very last uh, match of the spring preliminary. I believe he lost to Dear Jason narrowly yes. there. And, uh, you know, Hopefully for him, at least, he can uh, have a run that doesn't quite end right there this weekend. Yeah, uh, certainly. And, and if he's getting really close before, hopefully he's able to repeat that. Before uh, Again, consistency is definitely the name of the game in a card game like Hearthstone. So we have the lists in front of us. APX is going to start off with this Tempo Mage. He's a player that's been well known to love this deck. Him, Hotform, and a few other players, they, they swear by this deck. And then we have Lead Paint sticking with his... His aggressive shaman, the uh, he has this, his dragon warrior, his Reno warlock, and a token druid. Yeah, I really like his naming convention for his uh, his lists. Uh, I believe he, he called his his lists uh, comely, felicity, <laughs> melancholy, and uh, what was his dragon warrior? It was serendipity. <laughs> Is it the, the description of his emotions that he feels? I, I'm not entirely sure, but it, it it's yeah. it definitely leads the, to uh, a little bit more interesting than just custom Warlock 3 or whatever some of the maybe, other decks Maybe uh, former significant others. <laughs> He's got some weird names of significant others if he dated someone named Melancholy. But. Yeah. Maybe their parents didn't do a good job naming Who knows? Them. But Who knows? Felicity could be the way that he feels about this deck. Reminds him of uh, a simpler time. Uh, going into this matchup specifically, I do know that statistically, Tempo Mage does struggle a lot with the aggressive Shaman. Although I can't really understand too much why. Both fight for early game board, and I do feel like it can. I, I do feel like it's a lot more even than the statistics lead. I think the. Uh, aggressive Shaman deck just has more solid early minions and better cheap removal in it that, that's unconditional. Mm -hmm. uh, the Shaman deck is able to, well, let's just look at this right here. You know, the Tunnel Trogs can get out of hand really quickly and has access to more of those early minions that are strong. Uh, you have Tunnel Trogs in addition to the Argent Squires, which can pair with Flame Tongue to, to get advantageous trades and things like that. It can be difficult for the sort of longer game plan of the Tempo Mage deck to take fruition. Mm, I can definitely see that, where the the board early on just gets too much to handle with something like this. Not every Shaman starts off this fast with Not quite. three <laughs> one-mana plays, as well as a Lightning Bolt to supplant its overload synergy. But uh, Lead Paint is stuck with a turn relatively weak. Yeah, he, he uh, is basically just going to have to use his hero power this turn. Now we're going to waste a Rock Fighter to get a little bit of damage in right away, though there is a face there, and he just missed three damage. So just Twitch shot will let him know that. Yeah, it's too bad. But uh, at least he still has the board control for now. Uh, Void very much thinking about just playing the removal game because Mana Worm is very vulnerable. Um, it's just one of those things, too, where if you play Fireball and then your opponent plays a reasonably big minion, whether the thing from below or the flaming face, it's going to be really hard to remove that, too. Faceless has to be what he's really afraid of right now in terms of not wanting to use his Fireball, because right now his Mana Worm would be a really, really passive play it doesn't really accomplish much in the board uh, any overload card could just kill his uh, tunnel trog uh, or rather his his mana worm with the tunnel trog pretty much for free and there's lots of ways that this can go down that go very badly for him but it will just be well there is the flame uh, the flame wreath faceless so exactly what he uh, may have feared would have come to fruition and now lead paint is it's kind of an interesting spot because he could choose to play the flame faceless which would pump his trog but this is he's gonna go ahead and try and preserve his Tunnel Trog, rather than getting it into ping range. Ouch. And gets a really fortunate Tuskar Totemic there, getting the Totem Golem. And this might be why. The yeah, maybe that's why. <laughs> this could very well be why the, the uh, Aggro Shaman decks uh, end up being ahead. Yeah, that's really nasty. Void can still pick up cards like Flame Strike. It's not something to uh, discount at all, the lead paint. Still uh, has a lot more where that came from. Finley coming here fills out the rest of the mana curve. He can start trading into the Azure Drake. If he really wants to, you can just lava burst that Drake and just send everything to the face as well. APX Void's yep. list uh, does have one copy of Flame Strike, but also uh, two copies of Firelands Portal, which is not nearly as effective on this kind of board uh, at allowing him to get back into the game. 
uh, will be some trades on the board and just pushing damage to the face, getting the flame of faceless down to set up for next turn. Ah, oh, man, it's going to be so difficult to come back here. So Fireball, the hero power, and there is nine damage remaining. It's half your life. And Lepe also just has that Lava Burst, which could uh, which could pump up his Totem Golem if he wants to fire it off right away. Also has the spell power from the Totem. So getting that in now could be uh, could be pretty attractive, especially considering well, you know, he is getting into seven mana, uh, which would allow uh, allow APX4 to potentially cast Flame Strike. So he doesn't really want to commit that Totem Golem to the board here necessarily. Yeah, I like the Lava Burst. Six damage, dealing an extra two because the Tunnel Trog gets buffed. So that's an eight damage lava burst if you think about it. Yeah. How, how does it get any stronger than that? He would put, yeah, he's, oh, he's actually just gonna go ahead and hero power and send uh, okay. his minion in. This is a little bit more conservative. He saves the, the lava burst in case he maybe needs it for removal for, I'm not really entirely sure what, what his plan would be with it. Um, well, he's, he's saving his Lava Burst uh, just to see, maybe surprise his opponent so that way he plays a little bit um, less conservative. Because sometimes if you just put the Burst onto your opponent, yeah. you make them really worried but about look stuff. But look at this game now. He's, he's lost his Tunnel Truck, so he's missing the damage he'd get off of the, uh, the Tunnel Truck with the Lava Burst. He would have done an additional... Well, he's lethal now. Well, okay, well now we do that. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I don't... He would have been he, one does off. He, does he actually have it? No, he's one off Don't because he can't up. actually... Oh, no, he's a little spell damage. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. So, so he would yeah, have been one does. off without it. But <laughs> yeah. it's like one of those things where I guess you're afraid of potential Cabal's Tome shenanigans. Sure, maybe. sure. Yeah. Maybe, but what would he Tome into that would like terrify you there? An ice block or an ice barrier, and then maybe you could stall until the Yogs are on. Um, it's one of those things, too. So uh, all things considering, APX Void... I, I do feel like uh, he did get the unfortunate end of the stick of the first game queue. That is something that's always going to be really problematic when you bring um, something that's like just like every one of his decks is weak, is a little bit weak to something mm -hmm. in Leadpate's lineup. And Leadpate starts off with a really good win, and I think he's going to need it because he has Reno Warlock, and that's a deck that forever will be <laughs> under the fire. And at least in the Whispers of the Old God slash early Karazhan meta, people just don't like bringing that deck to tournaments, and yet some players are still loyal to it. Yeah, there have been a lot of Reno Warlock decks, not nearly as many as, as showed up uh, back in the spring season, but they've they've really gradually trickled out of the scene in favor of yeah. Zoo, and uh, we've kind of seen why. It's been a deck that's really struggled very often. Right, and the reason you'd bring it is so that way you can be strong against all the warriors, but then you open yourself up to the rest of the lineups, mm -hmm. such as uh, the Shaman decks, the the Warlock, the Zoo Warlocks. Uh, although, Lead Paint did ban the Zoo Warlock, which is mm -hmm. interesting. We haven't seen a, a Warlock ban in a very long time. I do know another player who really stuck by that plan and 6 -0 got really far last week, yep. fell at the very last game, but he also thinks that strategy is very good, he, too. He, he failed to win with his Reno Warlock deck, ultimately. <laughs> So, up, up against the freeze mate when he true. had Gulf Ram the, the, Shield the, off the Zerus. Yeah, the shifter Zerus at the Bulf was yeah. nearly the most amazing yeah. moment. But if you uh, don't like that game, you don't like Hearthstone, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. It was amazing. Yeah, that, that game was crazy. But uh, this one is going to be Druid versus the Tempo Mage. Is is Tempo Mage? Well, he's playing Firelands Portal. How does that dynamic change this matchup, if at all? Firelands Portal, I think, is much better than Flame Strike, which is typically the card that a lot of Tempo Mage decks have in that spot in this matchup. Uh, it gives you more reach. You just have more damage you can go to face. Uh, as we saw, actually, in just the last match, it enables you to clear through Ancient of War uh, with Azure Drake and actually develop a minion at the same time. So uh, I think that is definitely a card that makes this matchup considerably better. Blood Paint has a pretty decent hand with Innervate and Vod Teacher, but just has to survive that early game pressure it, that APX Let's Void puts magic. out there. He's got a lot of choices. Chooses um, the Cold Sorcerer just because it's, you know, you, you will not be able to use Sorcerer's Apprentice for a more swingy turn. All right, Lead Paint goes with the Innervate into Nourish. Yep, I have to imagine gaining mana crystals here. Just trying to set himself up for those powerful later turns. Yeah. Uh, he has a second Nourish wow. to find cards, so already up to six mana, going to <laughs> seven in his following so turn. So next turn, he's going to have an, the equivalent mana of APX Voice's Let's next two turns. Yeah. He has seven <laughs> mana crystals. Game. <laughs> <laughs> then, APX Voice is going to have seven crystals over two turns. All right, well, Mulch is not 
super exciting here. He could just go ahead. Yeah, he does actually end up uh, having the Violet Teacher into Mulch to slow down APX Void a little bit. Uh, we'll see what comes off the Mulch. But the key here is that he's slowing down the early aggression, and that's where the Temple Mage deck uh, has its strength in the matchup. Ooh. Important draw there to remove the Violet Teacher as well. He does have, uh, APX Void does have the Sources Apprentice, so he could play Sources Apprentice ah, and then coin right. out the Fireball to develop a little bit more to his board. I like that, that does leave him open to a possible swipe, but Lead Paint only has a single card in his hand. Okay. So he Arcane Missiles first to see if he can hit twice and then play a proactive four mana minion as well. Okay, this, yeah, I like this from APX Void because uh, the Water Element is much more stable against any of the removal that Lead Paint would be able to bring to bear here. Wow. Arcane Missile's math is actually very complicated yeah. if you start thinking about it. Because really if, if you if you cast it and one of the early game missiles takes out the one one, that changes the odds significantly. Mm -hmm. But if he at least hit it twice, that was the key there. Lead Paint has that nourish, hit some of his heavy hitting minions, and frankly, that's really what he's looking for at this point. He's developed so much mana. He's still at a healthy 27 life now, thanks to the armor from Shapeshift. And he really just needs to sort of start playing those late game bombs while APX Void is still kind of struggling to get any sort of significant development on the board. Yeah, but this is one of the best you can get. Two Firelands portals. Now, Kibler, we were making some friendly wagers on what we think the Firelands portals will summon. <laughs> you said you didn't actually say anything that you think it would be. I told you that that would be Captain Greenskin or Starving Buzzard. I'm, I'm going for Doom Guard. Oh, yeah. oh that's I'm right. Going you for Doom Guard. Doom Guard or Leroy, right? Yeah. Just for the, the crazy swing on the board that I can provide. Does not have access to the uh, Fireless Portal just yet. Uh, Shifting Shade is kind of interesting. There are actually a lot of good cards in Druid you can pick up, but uh, this Ragnaros is doing... <laughs> this Ragnaros is already doing a lot of work on this board. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for APX Void to remove, and uh, Lead Paint, the longer it stays in play, the more of an advantage he's gaining from uh, its effect every turn. I'm trying to think about like what's the best usage of mana here. I do like Wrath on the 4-3 on some kind, so that way you can make it very easy. Ooh, Vandral, does that change it? I don't think so. No. I still like the Sylvanas play, too. Yeah, I kind of like playing Sylvanas rather than Fandral here as well, simply because you know, your, your opponent wow. can't really... Whoa, okay. Well, you definitely play the Power of the Wild. Now I, now I like his play. <laughs> now I really like that play. <laughs> Shoot the Water Elemental. All right, All right. does not get the Water Elemental, but this, this game is really pretty much... Okay out of reach for APX Void, it feels. He is able to play the Sources Apprentice, and looks like he's... Is that a fire? No, <laughs> Raven Idol. I didn't even see the Raven Idol. That's, that's, that's kind of cool. Wait, but he discovers a, a mage spell. He does, he does. Forbidden Flame is... Is it eh? enough? He has what on the board? He has a Water Elemental, so it only does five damage Forbidden Flame. Mirror Entity is also surprisingly very useful against the, the hand. Chooses the Mirror Image just probably to have anti-Ragnaros tech. Yeah, he's, he's leaving himself with more of a board that the Ragnaros can uh, fire onto, which works out very well. And you know, here, maybe Sylvanas might have ended up being better, given the way that the turn actually ended up playing out. Because sure. now Lead Paint in a position, well, Swipe and Living Roots can pretty much clear everything off the board if he wants and just start sending damage to face. I do like uh, eventually getting Sylvanas out. There is an interaction with Sylvanas and Firelands Portal where if you Firelands Portal, Sylvanas will steal the minion. So it, it is one of those really tr annoying things that they, they mm. haven't used Fireball, so they can't really remove it in a convenient way with, I one, have no with, time uh, for games. with uh, one spell. And it's going to go ahead and take out the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Doesn't want uh, APX Void to get any cheap spells here. And we shall see where Ragnaros goes. Can Ragnaros even really kill a water elemental? It's just made of water. It can. Enough fire can extinguish anything. It did not. Well, he doesn't want to because he wants to extinguish the person who summoned Maybe the water elemental. Maybe he, like, elemental. called a truce with Neptalon. He's like, I'll leave your people alone. Uh, that's that's way above my head. You have to ask Nimsh for a proper response on that one in terms All of right. Warcraft lore. I will. Okay. <laughs> I have his number. All right, Firelands Portal on Ragnaros. It is 
Ooh, nice. that's not Doomguard, but that's also really good. It, is it? It's it's an interesting spot where like you don't want it to be too good because then Sylvanas it's true. gets better. No, it, it, the thing is that APX Void, you know, yeah, he, he needs to get rid of this Ragnaros, but doesn't want to put himself in a position where Lead Paint can get a great exchange. Does have the second mirror image, so right. now this is kind of a weird spot because he has so many minions in play. Does he even really want to remove the Ragnaros with one of the minions that can actually attack? Probably still. Yeah, I think you still want to kill Ragnaros just because of the long-term implications of the damage. What if it hits face and all of a sudden you're yeah. you're down to three health? It's true. He is he is still just eleven life. And if there were something like a you know spell power swipe there, uh, it'd be really really bad for him. So yeah, swipe here can't guarantee the kill uh, the the steal on the earth elemental. It's true. Hmm. That Earth Elemental hmm. definitely made things very interesting. This is a game that mm -hmm. looked like Lead Paint was just totally running away with, but a, a bunch of small minions to potentially absorb rag hits, and then pretty mm -hmm. big Firelands Portal really turning things around. Are you a fan of just playing Drew to the Claw and then just like not addressing the Earth Elemental so that way you can just start picking apart the board? Say you play Drew to the Claw, whether in charge or taunt um, either and then you just kind of help Savannah's attacks to keep it healthy well, and then all of a sudden have it just threaten whatever comes out next but then your opponent can just attack the uh, can just attack the Druid of the Claw right. with their Earth Elemental and then what do you trade your Savannah's and your Druid of the Claw for their Earth Elemental doesn't well, end up working out minions either themselves I guess it's all right well in the end it looks like he's just going to trade and take the O1 all right Interesting. Now, you look at a, uh, just the face of Lead Paint there. He's like, this did not work out. And they work out very well. It He's felt used like they could have gotten bigger value on it that. It really felt like that That was, I don't know, really awkward. He used a bunch of resources right. to kill the Earth Elemental and a bunch of 1-1 one one, or 0-2s oh, 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 even. He, he, had, he had Drew the Claw as well, which is actual synergy with Savage Roar in case he wanted to yeah. finish the game. He could have at least... Well, I guess he didn't want to gamble on the 50-50 of missing mm -hmm. uh, the the Earth Elemental, and all of a sudden the 7-3 is like challenging his 0-1 that he stole. So he'd rather, he says, if I can't have it, then nobody can have it. <laughs> and now, you know, APX Void, he has the Flame Strike to clear off this board and just start marching with that Water Elemental. The, uh... The life total may be 6 to 23, but Lead Paint is totally out of cards. He's already used both nourishes. Ooh, that's a big that's one. That's an ancient of war. It's gonna draw a lot of resources out from APX Void. That Firelands portal though can also be huge. Yeah, and there's there's a frost bolt too, so there's no way that this uh, this water elemental can end up attacking for lethal with the hero power next turn. There's also just a bunch of burn with a flame waker. Okay, yeah. The arcane missiles, arcane blast, frost bolt. So that gives you six extra flame weak uh, flame waker shots. <laughs> I expect, yeah, I don't think we'll see the Flame Waker here. I think that it's just mm. much safer to Frostbolt plus Firelands Portal plus Arcane Blast to take this out, get a five drop, hit your opponent. You get an extra 11 oh, right. shots, though. So you do Arcane get a lot of shots. Plus it true. gets a ton of shots. So the chances of clearing it, ooh, that's not a very good start. He uses to hit at least twice, I think. Okay. Oh, yeah, no. This is going quite poorly now. Yeah. I mean, he does have the, fl the Fire Lens Portal remaining in his hand. He could just yeah. ping his opponent's face, and that's exactly what he'll do. Okay. And he's waiting with the Fire Lens Portal to finish it off like uh, next turn. Power of the Wild, that does very little. Lead Paint had such an explosive start to this game, but APX Void was able to turn it around in the course of what seemed like just one or two turns. He had two nourishes, two wild growths, yeah. an innervate, and Vile Teacher, Fandral plays. Uh, but APX Void kind of out-grinding him, out-resourcing him. And Firelands, Firelands Portal. Portal. What's, is, is it another Earth Elemental? Oh, man. Maybe that Doom Guard you're talking about. Oh! oh well, that makes that <laughs> That is awkward. kind of funny. <laughs> Naga Sea Witch makes the Alex Rod cost only five mana. It also makes Arcane Blast cost five mana, so, you know, a little bit, a little bit calm A, calm B. Oh man, Lead Paint was praying for the Yogg. Did not get it. Yogg is nowhere to be seen. And yeah, Apex Wood just has lethal on board here. Nothing Lead Paint can do. I can see. 
And wow, that was that was such a turnaround. That uh, that Firelands yeah. portal into Earth Element. It, ha it feels like Lead Paint could have done something differently. The, the the way that he navigated his Sylvanas, the way that he he just played the, that sequence of turns. We were talking about yeah. the the Fandral turn where he he drew the Fandral off of I believe it was was a cycle for something. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. But he chose he chose to play the Fandral into Wrath that uh, into the Power of the Wild that he drew, rather than play the Sylvanas that turn. And then mm -hmm. he kind of got his board blown up that turn. It feels like if he played Sylvanas that turn, yeah. things might have gone a bit differently. Yeah, I, I do feel like that was the case because then the Mage never really gets back that board control, even if it's just a little tiny water right. elemental. And then you know you never know if that's able to help pick apart the mirror images. Ragnaros is a little bit longer. It, it's all a bunch of what ifs, but um, I think if there's anything that I can definitely vouch for is like I think Lead Paint definitely has a good positive attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, Lead Paint's one of those players who's just very hard to tilt, I think. Um, he's a player that's generally very positive and he's he's whenever I met him at events, he was just, just so happy to be there playing Hearthstone. So it feels like uh, this kind of small stakes here won't really set him off his game plan too much. Yeah, he was just sort of smiling and crinkling his nose, not like, you know, letting out these, like, uh, exasperated sighs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Earth yeah. Elemental comes off a Firelands portal, yeah, so for sure. definitely the right attitude to have. All right, so uh, the Mage and the Shaman are done, leading us to a 1-1 one -one score. Let's go into game number three, Druid versus Must Druid, one of the preserved. more important matchups in almost any lineups. I think Druid's like a deck that I think a lot of people would just bring because it doesn't lose too hard to anything, maybe the exception to Shaman and potentially the control shaman but you know you do are you are expecting to win with it against anything too it's very decent against the field this matchup still feels a little bit volatile based off the early game openings um, of which apx void has about the worst i've seen <laughs> yeah he's got a situational removal and almost Every expensive minion that he has. Oh, there's a lot of expensive minions in this deck. Let's uh, let's, not, let's not get too too crazy here. He's still got. I think there's an Anixia left in his deck. Another right. Ancient. Actually, uh, the Emperor, oh, the Emperor is right in his hand. Okay, so yeah, he's got most of the the heavy hitters, but this is a deck full of them. Yeah, now Lead Pink gets to go first. Apex Void not happy that he had to pass, and Lead Pink got that wild growth, and he does have a turn three play. So what he could hope for is Lead Paint to not have a very strong play on this turn, which he does have the Drew of the Claw, so that is already starting to get a little bit dicey. There is also the availability of Nourishing this turn. Yeah, the coin into Nourish could set him up for a... Uh yeah, it looks good. Like what's he, he's going to do? Could set him up into a Ragnaros very soon. Is just going to go ahead and wrap this off. Interesting. This, this feels like a matchup to me, in my experience, that, that's very often been one where uh, the game comes down to more like big board swings than something like a 3 2 hitting you. And expending a resource like that in order to kill your opponent's 3 2 doesn't feel like it necessarily is what you want to be doing. Yeah, it definitely is uh, something to consider too, but I think his plan changed when he saw Ragnaros in sure. his hand, and he also has, you know, Raven Idol and Swipe. So what he needs to do is have Ragnaros hit the board and make sure it sticks. Um, you know, interestingly enough, that plays into APX Void's hand, which mm -hmm. is you play slow, big minions, I mulch it, and I stall until I hit my big minions. So it could be one of the scenarios where Lead Paint tries to be pretty aggressive with his hand and ends up getting punished. All right, well, he is going to deviate from the Ragnaros on eight mana, picks up the Raven Idol, going to go ahead and make at least a reasonably big Violet Teacher board. No, actually not many good options for him here. He can mark of nature yeah. the Violet Teacher, I guess. Make yeah, it harder he can to make kill. A, a big Violet Teacher here, able to uh, develop a couple of students. Yeah, it's... 3-9 is nothing to scoff yeah, at. Uh, the, the the health of a Violet Teacher is very relevant in this matchup because uh, the the swipe hero power is, is a very natural play in this matchup on the six mana, which is exactly where APX Void is. So preserving that Violet Teacher and ensuring that it's going to be able to stick to the board for a little while definitely has quite a bit of value. And he, as we see, may very well just bait out a mulch, which clears the way for Ragnaros. Yeah, it's not a bad mulch on Void's side at all. This is one of the highest priority removal targets. It's got buffed by a Raven Idol, so you're killing two cards for one, although you do give a card to your opponent, so it cancels out. Mulch is bad, and I put that in air quotes, effect. But now Lead Paint can just play Ragnaros onto the board pretty confidently. One mulch has been used. 
And there's only a single copy in either player's deck, so uh, yes. Leadpate knows that this Ragnaros is uh, is here to stay, at least until it's time for the God of Death, or a lot of swipes. He can stall until that point. He has Ancient of War, which can absorb a lot of that damage, even survive the first Fire Blast from our Fire Lord. Right, well, there will be a big tree available for lead paint as well. And uh, yeah, looks like he's going to go ahead and cast it pretty quickly. One problem for APX Void, even if he does make it to that Yogg-Saron, he's mostly just drawn minions this game. He hasn't cast that many spells. So That's even if he point. is able to hang on, he'll have a very, very low impact Yogg-Saron when he does get to that stage of the game. So he has played two or three spells? I think it's, I think it's something like that, yeah. And, ooh, well, Ragnaros knows what he wants to do, which is burn APX Void's face into a crisp. Yeah, I feel like that's what Ragnaros is doing a lot. I mean, Lead Paint also missed Ragnaros. Ragnaros missed a few minions back in the previous game, which also could have helped him have board control, but also put him within range of killing. So this is one of the things that Ragnaros does, just so much pressure either way. And APX Void now, he can play another... Uh, another Ancient here, but that doesn't do too much. Uh, Lead Paint could just attack into it and ensure that his Ragnaros is able to take out one of them or just keep raining fire down an APX Void. Definitely could, a tough spot. Could ramp to yogg -Saron. Yeah, it's true. That may be hmm. his best option could be uh, to just cast the Wild Growth. He can actually, I believe, cast Nourish for Mana, uh, Wild Growth, and the Feral Rage this turn. Because he could actually get two spells off the wild growth because he gets the uh, once he actually gets ten mana from the the nurse clip for mana. You do have ways to refill your hand. I do I do feel like I want to somehow get out to the Yogg's Run plan if this Ragnaros chooses to miss. But there's also this weird possibility that Ragnaros hits the face and all of a sudden you're within burn range too. Because true hypothetically, if is there a way for Lead Paint to set up um, potential lethal? Just looking at Savage Roar plus Swipe here. It looks like if he. Savage Roars, he's actually, I think, a little bit off. Savage Roar plus Swipe. I don't think he can quite get through all the health on the minions and get the damage into the face. So why not set up for um, a scenario where either way it works? You can sh you can swipe the face, perhaps, and then set up that Ragnaros kills the minion, mm -hmm. or uh, or kills uh, or, or kills your opponent. Yeah, that's definitely uh, an option available for Lead Paint here. Regardless of, of what uh, you know, he ends up he ends up doing here. It's definitely a great position still. This Ragnaros has gone unchecked for quite a while. Yeah, I don't mind that. If you if he chooses to go, if he swipes the face, he has the ability to Savage Roar as well and mm -hmm. kill off one of the minions, trade in his uh, Ancient of War. It does feel like a pretty good opportunity just to try to end the game. Yeah, it puts him at a 50% chance of just Ragnaros ending the game immediately. Uh, he's able to clear off he's debating exactly how he wants to attack here, whether he wants to, yeah, clear up this. It says either Ragnaros kills you or kills your minions. So sure. not guaranteed lethal, but guaranteed you're in a terrible position. And it is oh. not the face this time, so APX yeah. Void has a stay of execution for a moment. I'm surprised he didn't choose to use the Innervate there to innervate a, a minion, but I guess in this position, Lead Paint just wants to be a little bit conservative with his resources because he's not sure the outcome of the results here. Yeah, and setting up Emperor, and I imagine, yeah, Feral Rage 4 armor here is going to set APX Void to a point where he's not going to be killed by Ragnaros next turn, even if it does go face, and now he's going to have Yogg-Saron available. Okay, so now he can play out his entire hand, which I'm definitely a big favor of. Or uh, perhaps playing around the Yogg's run, don't want to sh put everything into the board only to just get it wiped. Yeah, Lead Paint choosing not to uh, not to set up for you know the the doom or or twisting Nether, leaving him with zero resources. Sure. Okay. Well, but Rag he's at knows six what he, Rag knows what he wants. That's dangerous range. <laughs> it certainly is because you're never sure if your opponent uh, is going to kill himself with the Ragnaros, or sorry, with the Yogg-Saron. Does he have an alternative play? He picked up Living Roots and Swipe. I don't really see a great option. There's Azure Drake plus Living Roots Swipe, mm. which can clear most things. He can actually... It clears off almost everything except for 3-1, unfortunately. Yeah. If he had just a, a little bit extra damage, he would be able to target Ragnaros twice over. All right, it will not be Yogg-Saron for APX Void here. He is going to go ahead and take the uh, the swipe on Ragnaros. Or maybe not. 
Oh no, you, uh, the Emperor can attack, so it does clear actually. Oh yeah, you're, oh, no. you're, yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. I was thinking, I, I was missing this, the spell damage on the. Uh, well, no, he, he can't take out both of them. Yeah, he, he? he's still. Oh no, he's he a hero power. He you're right. It. Totally yeah, right. He clears it because the, the mana left over from the hero power. So that leaves him just barely alive. But Lead Paint already did use Drew the Claw. He already did use Swipe. Mm -hmm. He's just yeah, a so four lives wrong. This is a pretty good position yeah. for APX Void. This has, again, been a huge turnaround yeah. for APX Void. He I, was in yeah. what, you know, just under pressure from Ragnaros for so long, and yet here he is again with an uh, incredible comeback. I gotta say that uh, Lead Paint, he's playing around Yaxaron, but at the same time, if his minion was on board any turn before this, he would actually have the lethal this turn. Yep. And instead, he's played really slow and giving his opponent a chance to actually come back. Although, APX Void again is really low, and down to the point where Hellfire actually kills him, too. We have to hero power first. All right, well, APX Void is going to go digging with Wild Growth Cycles. Yeah. Probably best to avoid playing Yaxrine at all costs if you don't have to. Oh, at, at this point, yeah, he is definitely trying to avoid uh, running into the self-lethal with Yogg. Ooh. But he's got a, a lot of resources all of a sudden. Yeah, he can pick up so much life gain with these double Raven Idols. He can also pick up um, all the ways to potentially finish the game. Uh, yeah. No, he's got lethal here. Nine damage lethal. on board. Mark of the Wild is an extra two. Oh, so he's got, sorry, he's got nine damage with Power of the Wild. So he's at 13 damage. It's not quite 19. enough. What to do? He still has a second Raven that'll try and discover here. So mm -hmm. Mark of the Wild both allows him to potentially pressure as well as offers uh, a tool for potentially trading in, protecting himself. Does just to go ahead and, and Mark of the Wild immediately. Clear off Fandral. Okay, so he's running out of time. Uh, he obviously would have wanted to Raven out first. Mm -hmm. And with this Raven Idol, he's only given like one second to choose, and there's another Raven Idol. All right. He had, I think it was Nourish. And Swipe here would just close yeah. it out. It is not Swipe, it's Anixia. But is that gonna be enough? There's, it does give Lead Paint a huge board, but there is that Raven Idol waiting in the hand. Not quite lethal available for APX Void just yet. He has 14. Uh, through Power of the Wild. You can pick up lethal through a lot, there's a of, lot ways. of cards. There's Swipe, there's uh, Starfire, Starfire another, I believe another Power of the Wild is lethal as well, or not quite? I think that would be a little bit off. He has, yeah, he has 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18. Yeah, you're right. Power of the Wild is not quite enough. So he will go Raven Idol if he finds one of several cards he can close out this game. Ooh, Starfire. That's it. Starfire. I believe should that is close going to be out. enough. What a crazy game. Yeah. This is just a back to back game. So Ragnaros sat in the board for multiple turns, <laughs> but Lead Paint just wasn't able to ultimately close it out. Yeah. So Apex Void gets the lead, but again, I do feel like it, the destiny, the fate was in Lead Paint's hands. He could have put out the 3 5 with an Innervate. He held on to Innervate for just a hero power later on. He was really concerned about the inevitable Yogg Saron comeback, but. Apex Void had it, he didn't even need it. Yeah. It, he would have he would have had that one minion which would have represented just, just enough damage to mm -hmm. end the game. And yeah, he he tried to play around you know the possibility of Yogg wiping his board, but as you mentioned before, yep. there hadn't been that many spells played for Yogg. Right. And he ended up leaving himself open to you know, the Azure Drake swipe plus Living Roots, which his opponent had had Emperor in place. So there's a lot of things his opponent can do that are not Yog saron right. against his board that can potentially get him back into the game, and it's exactly what happened. Yeah, and that's also the worst case scenario. There's also a lot of times when Yog doesn't do much. It kind of keeps yeah. it neutral. Also, might kill himself because he has such low health. Right. Uh, if you just cast a simple Hellfire or misdirect the damage spell, it could be uh, really unfortunate. So I do feel like Lead Paint put a gave Yog a little too much credit sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, he is great, and he is our Lord and Savior year and we all bow down <laughs> and worship him uh, on a nightly basis. But sometimes you have to acknowledge that even an old god has its limitations. It is, it is sometimes the player who, who casts Yogg, whose hopes are the one, in fact, end. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's what, that is his name. So we're going into game four, potentially the last game of the series. Apex Void, I believe, is just playing a Cthune Warrior. He's playing an interesting version of Cthune Warrior. It's not the full-on 
commanding shout cycle Cthulhu warrior, but he has uh, a lot of those elements in the deck. Uh, he he's running a lot of extra card draw, uh, but he doesn't have the commanding shouts. He has one right. pyromancer. It's it's kind of a, a hybrid style of yeah. Cthulhu warrior. He's got like loot hoarders in it, mm -hmm. which is a card that you normally see with the or, um, one turn kill uh, Worgen deck that you often see on ladder. So it's an interesting variation, um, something that I feel like he probably concocted himself as specific tech. He is banning other warriors, though, so it's not like it changed any of his matchups. Lead Paint's the one who left his warrior up, which is very surprising. I, again, I don't really expect to see many um, warriors being available unless you're specifically playing a, a arena warlock setup, which is what uh, Lead Paint has, because he has that arena warlock to snipe the warrior. Yeah, Warrior it has been, I think, it's the most popular class here as well as the most popular class the preliminary last weekend. Also, by far, the most banned class. Yep. So, lots of variations of the deck, but we barely get to see any of them because they're always banned. <laughs> it's true. Warrior actually has some really cool stuff, especially the control warriors that have Tink Master Overspark and a few other really cool techs in there. But no one wants to play against it. All right, well, APX Board will get to play Warrior, one of the rare occasions that will happen in this tournament. And Lead Paint sends back his entire hand, definitely looking uh, in this matchup to get his ramp on. That's right. I think he's in a position where, you know, you can just win with the Druid. He has to win anyways. Um, it will be one of those scenarios, too, where Lead Paint loses this game. His Druid has lost three games in the series. That would be quite unfortunate. Yeah, he, he has really, you know, Ragnaros has let him down. In these games, or maybe he's he's let Ragnaros down. Who knows? What are, what are the two? It's the Fire Lord has come to play quite a bit and has never yeah. quite gotten the job done. Why is it always uh, Lead Paint's fault? You know, maybe what if it's Yogg-Saron's the one at fault? He's the one who's the merciless guy. <laughs> well, I think I think Ragnaros himself is pretty merciless. He enslaved all of the true. Dark Iron Dwarves. <laughs> Did you know true. that Emperor Tharrison's second greatest regret is uh, allowing his people to be enslaved by a vengeful Fire Lord? Isn't he summoning? Ragnaros? That's what happened. Power? He summoned, oh, he summoned okay. Ragnaros, and Ragnaros enslaved his people. Gotcha. That's, his, that's his flavor. And text. him, too. Yeah, him, him as well. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't that know, sounds I don't like know a what really, his greatest regret That is. sounds like a tough life. <laughs> you know, it, 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 I think that's the, his second biggest regret. What's what's worse than that? What happened that's Letting worse than that? Letting his wife die? Yeah, perhaps? something like that. Yeah. But he, I would imagine that Emperor Thorazin's quite the sweetheart. Despite his, you know, his rugged looks, you might feel like he's a little hard around the edges, but he's, he, he's, a, he's a romantic dude. Seems that way. Yeah. Did, doesn't he kidnap Magni's daughter? Oh, yeah, I, or heard about I, that. I, don't, I don't remember exactly how it goes, but uh, we see the mulch coming out on the <laughs> Accolade of Pain. That's how much he wants to stop his card draw. Just mulching a 1 3. There's plenty of targets that you would like to mulch, whether it's the Doom Callers or those big 4 6 Emperor twins. However, you choose the most the Accolade of Pain because you're just really respectful of all the, the card draw that this deck tries to generate. Well, Lead Paint, you know, he had a hand of, of double living roots and really wanted to, I think, get in the board and not just allow APX Void to get massive value off of them. Yeah. Again, some of these interesting choices for being able to draw a Nobish Inventor. This is a card that you're supposed to play if you don't have any other good cards in your collection. <laughs> you first started playing Hearthstone it's like, well, a I month don't ago. Own four drops, so I'll put this right. one in my deck. You're like, well, I, I don't have at least Star Seeker, so I guess I could just put in Nobish Inventor. Well, you know what card text is good? Draw a card. It is There's good. a lot of cards that say what that, if, and a lot of them are in this deck. Minion. That's pretty good, too. Mm. But what if it says silence your own minion? Oh, uh, it's a little worse. Unplayable. Wah, wah. I don't know if I call it unplayable. Oh, I would call no. it <laughs> playable in specialized kidding, situations. I'm not going to go into it. Yeah. No purifies in this field just yet. And I there probably won't be any think ever. But we, we might see purify played before other cards uh, in Hearthstone currently. There's definitely a lot of bad cards out there. Well, purify is like, but not even close to the worst card even in the set. Okay. <laughs> That is an opinion, and you are entitled to one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Although, uh, if there's one thing we can agree is that uh, I don't think I don't think Warrior's in a bad position here. You can look at the hand, and it's got a lot of cycle, and that's kind of what the game plan wants to do. And you don't really compromise yourself too much with the Cthulhu plan. In fact, you had the Doom Caller in there. All right, and Lead Paint. He's. You know, in an okay spot, he's been able to get uh, a little bit of uh, his acceleration going here with the Meyer Keeper. Rats down the uh, Gnomish Inventor. 
but still, he, he's, he's building to a end game, but his end game isn't necessarily as powerful in this matchup as it, it could be in a lot of others. And yeah, he's gonna see his uh, his Meyer Keeper go down and a board of, of motley minions for his opponent now, putting mm -hmm. some pressure on. Yeah, Cthune Warrior has, you know, historically been a very problematic matchup for the token druid because they're so good at being resilient against all of your shenanigans and mm -hmm. building the board. They can whirlwind your minions through Ravaging Ghoul. They can fiery war axe any early game minions you play with combination of slam. Uh, they have single target removals and they also have brawl in case the board gets way too big to control. So, uh, and, and then when you try to turn it on them, they have Cthune to swing it back in their favor. It's very tricky, and it's a matchup that requires you to be very fast onto the board, and it's turn eight, or sorry, not turn eight, it's eight mana turn for Lead Pain, and he still doesn't have a single minion stick. If the warrior removal between Execute and Shield Slam, uh, and the combination with uh, Disciple of Cthune here, is, you know, so many ways to deal with both large and small minions, and uh, also, just big boards of, of small minions, thanks to the Ravaging Ghoul. Lots of ways to deal with everything that Lead Paint can throw at him, and you know, he's really, really struggling to uh, find a way to hold on here. Although he does have a pretty good amount of spells, and he has a large hand. The, the big scary thing is that Cthune Warrior is so good at grinding people out of resources. Uh, Cthune, however, the cycle Cthunes have gotten so much better at being able to tempo their opponent. Now, that sounds a little bit weird, but it's because once the board clears out, they're able to play a lot of these strong minions, and all of a sudden you can't come back from them, and then they draw Cthune very consistently. Because a lot of times people always wonder, like, well, how often can I draw Cthune? That's actually Cthune's Druid's biggest weakness. The fact that you play all these things leading up to Cthune and then you don't have Cthune and then you just play these minions for no reason. Um, that's why a lot of the Druid decks debated for a long time about putting Nourishes in their deck. Like, mm -hmm. should I put two or just one? Uh, and then they wow. only settled on one. It is time for Yogg-Saron already. Let's see uh, what the God of Death has in store. We see APX Boy just kind of put his hands over his head. All right, wow. well, that is a nine damage Holy Wrath. Jeez. All right, and a Nourish. Uh, That's going to fill up Lead Paint's hand. Right. Prep. Helps him uh, weed through some of his spells. A little spells. bit more of a tempo turn. Okay, Wrath for three. Backstab on his own Yogg. Rampage is now live. Innervate. Oh, it's perfect. Dark minions. Bargain. Wow, this is such a huge swing from Yogg here. Not bad. Another, Another Innervate. Innervate. <laughs> he basically got to play with 16 mana this turn. No, oh. wait. 18 mana this turn. Wow, that turn was huge. Prep Living Roots into <laughs> double power of the wild off of the Innervates. Crazy. <laughs> all right. Kill, Dang. kill all of your minions, put 15 power in play, go. Uh, draw cards. Draw, yeah, draw some cards. He did burn a, a card. He burned his five teachers. In fact, both five teachers are gone because the Dark Bargains mm -hmm. offered them. Was it worth it, Lead Paint? What happens to the nation if you, if the teachers can't have a safe job? If you're just killing them off, well, let's paint dark real fast. It's it's he, this thing. <laughs> the thing is like his board. Okay, well he does have Oknixia. I was thinking like if this board gets clear, then what does he do to get back on the board? Because he uh, lost he, all his he, he teachers. Oknixia. Right. Yeah. So I was saying that. But then he's pulling out <laughs> Ravaging Ghoul. It's true. Yeah, Ravaging and Ghoul and uh, and execute the. The bane of Anixia. Yeah. What now? Just, if you have the Void Field tempted to use the Brawl right here, perhaps he can just execute the 9-5 and just to play a little bit slower. Yeah, it looks like he's debating getting some card draw going. Gonna go ahead and shield block, see what he can find. We'll just slam and digging for more. Oh, that is an interesting slam target, I guess. <laughs> See the little raise the eyebrows with lead paint? That was your turn? Yeah, that was... <laughs> Draw some cards and play an Imp Master? That was really curious. He did, you know, he didn't address the board. He, by slamming Yogg, what does he What does he accomplish here? He sets it up for... I'm not even his quite deck sure. Specifically, it's not like he's setting up for Baron Geddon or some other way to range of Oh, Wild Pyromancer, if he picks it up. Okay, yeah, putting them both at three does mean that he can Pyromancer and... Uh, well, he can't clear the board if they're all at three because he can't cast that many spells before the Pyromancer dies. But he could play Blood to Icker and at least kill that with the Pyromancer. Okay. There's only five cards left in Druid, by the way, so Lead Paint really has to make this work. Fire War Axe is another way you can clear this. Right, it will be Brawl for APX Void. Yeah, he does set up uh, all but the 
Fendril now, who died of the Fire War Axe. Okay. And he does get one of the saplings as the Brawl winner. Mm -hmm. And Apex Void, why is he holding onto the coin, realizing that's going to be really important for the Pyromancer? But he's only, he still has 12 cards remaining, and only one of them is Pyromancer. That's a 9% chance or less to draw it. Um, Lead Paint is just going to play a Nixia continue to put the pressure on. Even if Nixia is cleared, he's got so many threats lined up. And he also does have finishing damage. Swipe and Starfire's nine bursts from the hand. Yep. Maybe even more. Wow, is he looking to wild growth? What is he trying to find? I think he's trying to figure out what how he wants to stagger his threats. Mm -hmm. If he play if he plays wild growth, I almost feel like he's gonna play Ancient of War or Ragnaros instead. Um, Ancient of War is more resilient to whatever you want to play afterwards. Ragnaros is just more most pressure. All right, so he decides to leave Ragnaros, his uh, his faith in the Fire Lord, get some damage in. It always hits face yep. in this case. Um, this execute is nasty. I would like to see potentially the shield block, unless he wants to just play the Emperor Thor's and not use the coin either. Okay. Setting up uh, Emperor Thorson, keeping oh, the coin, he could potentially drop right. Cthune, uh, get the, the cost reduction on... Actually, not quite. Well, he, he needs a cost reduction on Cthune as well. Right, you're supposed to reduce Brand. Yeah, yeah, if you reduce Brand and Cthune, you can explode your opponent a single turn. Ooh, yeah. Azure Big oh, plus man. swipe here. Will clear off the entire board. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. Apex Void feels like he's uh, rushing a little bit of his turns, too. He's playing very fast, and I think he... Well, there's well, Cthune. Okay. So if he shield blocked, he would have gotten Cthulhu and played Emperor this turn, have the the combo the, that we were talking yeah, about. But Brandon he cannot quite do it. He still has he to is do just going to fire off Cthulhu here, yeah. And he should be able to kill the Azure Drake most of the time. Although it got kind of close, that last little <laughs> tick there. If that technical <laughs> missed and just slapped the face, who knows? And I think APX Void is deciding whether he wants to attack the face with this War Axe this turn, because he has a second War Axe he's potentially setting up for a, a lethal attack the following turn. I don't mind it. You do have to end the game eventually. Yep. And you're aware that your opponent draws his entire deck. He has Ancient of War. You just have to get past those taunts. Yeah, and now Lead Paint, he's facing the potential of lethal from Cthulhu. He definitely has to defend himself now. And he's also facing fatigue. Yeah. Something that's very relevant. And if his opponent's able to get damage to the face at all. He's now in a position, you know, he previously. He Previously played the Ragnaros, and the Ragnaros was able to be re removed by a single execute. Now he's in a position where he cannot play the Anixia because the Anixia would simply die. Right. Or he would simply die by getting attacked in the face by the Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. so, so he needs to play Ancient of War. Yeah, he, he has to play Ancient of War or he dies. Or he could, I guess, no, he, he, doesn't, have the, he doesn't have the damage to kill it with, uh, you know, Starfire plus Swipe is still off from being able to actually remove the 10 tank Cthulhu. So he 100%, I believe, has to play the Ancient. Or he, well, he doesn't know that there's another War Axe, but the, the attack to the face yeah. really, really suggests there's a War Axe. He could theoretically play Sylvanas plus Hero Power and not die immediately to Fatigue, but sure. then he's going to die to Fatigue a turn later. So, yeah, he will go ahead and Ancient up. Yeah, his best hope is that his opponent has to go through Cthulhu the hard way. He can remove Cthulhu and then play his own minion. Mm -hmm. But, uh... He, APX Void is on a draw to potentially just kill this uh, this Ancient of War off pretty easily. Let's see. How much damage does he have? He's got five damage from hand plus mm -hmm. the one from fatigue. Oh, no, he's got he, uh, yeah, four. He has, uh, yeah, he has the from nine brand. damage from hand because he can brand the... Oh, the, you absolutely go for that. Get that damage in while you can. Let fatigue end this game, yep. end this series. As Cthulhu gets even bigger. Yeah, it's unfortunate that he couldn't uh, utilize this to buff Cthulhu to go for the attack directly to the health, but Apex Void is putting Lead Paint on his final turn, and that's going to wrap up the series. Our Canadian player goes yet another step further in the preliminary. And those those three games that, that uh, Lead Paint struggled with that Druid deck, they all felt like there were just a, a ton of different options that, that he, he had available to him, and Ragnaros always let him down. Yeah, it, it felt like um, he was not a, a son of fire in this <laughs> case here. He, you know, you, he, the night was very dark for lead paint and full of terrors.
Absolutely. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's one of those situations where Lead Paint uh, is going to have to pick himself up, and he is another player that's falling, but so are many players. And here to give us an update on what's been happening around the preliminary is TJ over at the Blackboard. Thank you very much, Dan. That's right. There's been a lot of action happening around the whole preliminary. We're starting to get towards the end of day number one, which means that there's a lot of players eliminated. Uh, I'm joined with Admirable. He's here to help me give some updates. But right away, let's go ahead and start getting right into these regions and see which players uh, are left remaining. Um, we had some uh, updates earlier. Uh, Chess Dude fell as well. And uh, we're going to get to see in a second here uh, exactly who's left. We started with 168, and now we're down to less than half of that Admirable 70 remain. Yeah, that's the nature of double elimination is you will quickly thin out the field as the rounds start to pour out. And here you can see every single one of those red strikes means it's been two match losses so far. And they'll have to wait until next time to try to make their dreams come true. Yeah, but there's still a lot of well-known names, unlike Europe, where uh, each region, it seems like some of these players, uh, Hot Form, Dwayne, Fibonacci, all of these big names, Chalky still left, as we saw earlier. Yep and uh, definitely a lot uh, still all, left. All of Luminosity Gaming is actually still left in this event and uh, putting up quite a big finish. And here you can see the Tavern Heroes. Oh, it's It's been rough for that group. Yeah, and uh, we also have some uh, footage from uh, the venue in Tennessee that's hosting uh, one of these fireside gatherings. Have a few players there, so uh, a little bit calmer there than what we've seen, but definitely you can tell they're enjoying some Hearthstone. Hopefully they're enjoying uh, their event as well. Yeah, I mean, every time I've been to Esports Arena to participate, it's been a blast, a lot of camaraderie between the players. It's almost like everyone there rallies behind you, even though you're all kind of against each other. Yeah. It's a really cool feeling. Some regional pride going on there is, is definitely a thing, even though it's everybody's against each other at that venue. Uh, it's kind of cool. But let's go over uh, some of the updates quickly. Uh, lots of players being eliminated. Chess Dude uh, has been eliminated. Amnesiac took a win over Deninja. Uh, but then Amnesia actually went on to law, lose his next match. Uh, so he's going to be eliminated as well. Uh, Frozen falls down, but he's going to go to the lower bracket. And Firebat is out. Yeah, last chance for uh, the former world champion to make another BlizzCon appearance. But uh, when you only compete in one of the preliminaries, it's tough to pull out a win from just one of those. So unfortunately, he'll have to wait till next year. Yeah, and so that means we won't have a world champion, uh, a former world champion at this year's BlizzCon. So we're guaranteed to have a new world champion unless Artosis... <laughs> from uh, 2013, uh, finally manages to... Uh, We're going way back on this yeah, one. <laughs> he manages to find a victory. He does in, live in so, Korea. He does, so. so he could participate in the Asia-Pacific qualifier. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Artosis isn't making it. Don't get your hopes up if you're an Artosis fan. But uh, let's go ahead and flip this board over. We got some names to eliminate, Admirable. Yep, it always hurts to, uh, to scratch these names off the board, but that is the nature of Hearthstone tournaments. You can't win every one, and many players will be eliminated from this. Fortunately for me, my two are still in the running. Yeah, but uh, you can go ahead and eliminate Chess Dude. So Soddle actually has one down. And uh, Kibler, unfortunately, has one down as well, as we're going to go ahead and cross out Firebat there. Yep, Frodan also has one pick going down with the winter champion himself, the young savage, Amnesiac, yeah. who is, uh, is out of the tournament as well at this point. Might so, as well. No Might repeat as well. champions. That's actually a really poor X. I think it looks fantastic, just yeah, like you. It's got a little bit of flair to it. But yeah, still a lot of players in the room. Chalky, Just saying, Rosty. Uh, Admiral, you're actually the only person who has both of your picks left. Yeah, I, I honestly, I, the Yo! It's Flo spot was really interesting to me. I thought about picking Muzzy. I was like, ah, I think Flo's going to perform better. Muzzy, of course, beats Flo. Yeah. <laughs> they so play against each other. He's in the lower bracket. Uh, but we just eliminated two names, Chess Dude and Firebat from Saddle and Kibler. And uh, they're actually going to be bringing us the next match. So let's see uh, how sad they actually are.